Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at some of the secrets and easter eggs you can unlock within Bendy and the Dark Revival. This video contains a whole host of secrets, but as of writing, a new update dropped which claims to have added even more. So expect a follow-up video in the coming weeks depending on how much new stuff has been added. But for now, sit back, relax, and let's explore the secrets hidden away in the inky depths of Joey Drew Studios. Our first two secrets are found right at the beginning of the game. After getting up from Audrey's desk, walk over to the mirror on her office wall and press the interact button. Doing so will cue an animation where Audrey strikes a pose in the mirror's reflection. Do this five times for a creepy scare, where a ghoulish face appears. After calling the elevator, instead of entering it, head back to Audrey's office and you will now be able to collect up the juggling ball sat atop her desk. There are three in total. The second is found on the floor beside this desk, and the third by this typewriter in the office just before the elevator. Collect up all three of these balls and then throw them into Wilson's janitor bucket in the hallway to meet a puppet-like character who hacks up the balls before vanishing back into the murky water from whence it came. Whoa. What the heck is this? You may remember in the original Bendy game, Bendy and the Ink Machine, each chapter contained a hidden cutout of the game's creator, the Meatly. They were unlocked by walking through invisible walls adorned with a Boris the Wolf poster. Bendy and the Dark Revival ups the ante by including not 5, but 10 hidden Meatly cutouts, and this time each has a very unique appearance. Just as before, they are hidden behind certain walls featuring a Boris poster. However, we must reach the point of no return in Chapter 5 before these walls become accessible. Here is each and every Meatly cutout and how to unlock them. The first is found near the Heavenly Toys Workshop, up this climbable wall where we first collect an audio log. It features a very normal looking Meatly design. The second is located in Animation Alley, in this room behind a breakable wall. Here we find a very happy looking Meatly waiting for his meal to be served at the dinner table. The third Meatly is behind the poster on the wall in the sewer tunnels, not too far from where we first meet Porter during Chapter 2. This musical Meatly is jamming away with some choice tunes. For the fourth Meatly secret, head back to the locker room area which led to our first gent pipe upgrade in Chapter 2. At the very beginning of this area is a Boris poster on the wall here. Walk through this wall to reveal a Meatly missing his head, with a meat cleaver by his feet. Still, he doesn't seem too bothered. For the fifth Meatly secret, head to the artist rest area and into the lost and found room. It is at the back of this room behind this wall that the Meatly is found. As you might expect from an area titled Artist Rest, we find this version of Meatly sketching in his notebook. The sixth cutout is found just after the King Widow boss fight before entering the sewers in this passageway. The poster is on clear display, so just walk through it. On the other side is a burly version of the Meatly, flexing his tree trunk sized arms. Number seven is found in the downtown area in this alleyway after leaving the butcher shop. Look up to the side of this building and you'll see a Boris poster that we must use Flo to reach. Behind this poster is a very elegant looking Meatly in a top hat with a cane. Meatly number 8 is hidden behind the Boris poster after first leaving the vent system and entering the gent factory where the keepers patrol. This one is fantasy based, a wizard design which recalls Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. The ninth cutout is located in the Alice Angel boss arena. You'll need to leap over this sofa and into the wall behind it. After doing so, we find a very heroic superhero looking Meatly levitating above the floor. The tenth and final Meatly is situated in the north wing, just before the stealth section with the keepers. A torn Boris poster is found on the wall of this hallway. 
walk through it to find a very vampiric looking puppet man. You may remember Sean Flynn from Bendy and the Ink Machine. He was a toy maker working in the Heavenly Toys workshop. While we find a note from Sean on the main story path, his actual audio log is quite well hidden and contains a bonus quest to boot. To find Sean's audio recording, we must head back to this hallway found just beyond the toy workshop and before Animation Alley. Then use Flow to reach the top of this giant ink pipe. This leads to a back room where Sean's recording can be found. Here is his audio log for those interested. Well Sean, you finally did it. You went and told the boss exactly what's up. It's time to move on, I said to him. This toy man's ready for a new adventure. I have to admit, he took it far better than I expected. Probably because a lot of other people be ditching this month as well. But I don't pay no mind to Mr. Drew. I ain't leaving because of that old windbag. No, -ha. I've seen far worse in my day, that's for sure. I'm hitting the road because it's time for Sean Flynn to see some open sky. Find myself a little cabin upstate. Somewhere the family and I can start anew. But before I go, I've made one last toy. A little parting present for the factory lads. Let's see how long it takes them to find it. Sean tells us he made one final toy before he quit the studio, but he also states that this toy is well hidden. To find Sean's final creation, we must backtrack past this secret area, and opposite this room with a giant Boris plush, you will notice a chain-linked fence. Look up and there is a small gap at the top of the fence that can be flown through. On the other side is Sean's final creation, this tiny toy robot, which can then be collected up to unlock the achievement Plaything. The Animation Alley lobby holds several secrets. The first of these is a very well hidden room which must be unlocked by locating three unique posters around the area. In the atrium there is a locked gate and it seems unpassable, but by tracking down these posters and tearing them apart with the gent pipe, a series of clickable buttons are revealed. The posters are all found fairly close to one another, most of them in hidden rooms accessible after breaking down these crawl spaces. Poster 1 states, take 5 to stay alive. Poster 2 is an image of Bendy as a bee. And poster 3 contains the phrase, joy in work, trust in Joey. Once all three buttons are pressed, you'll hear a little audio cue play out. Return to the locked gate in the atrium and it will now grant you access to a secret area, where a shaft leads down into a hidden room containing an ability upgrade. You'll also notice a locked door to the left and a smashable brick wall. Breaking through this wall leads to a series of crawl spaces which eventually take us to another sealed doorway. The sign, Quiet Please, is found outside. This seemingly impassable door can be unlocked though. To do so, head back to the Little Devil Lounge area and over to this radio. If we interact with the radio, it begins to play a song. Ignore this and instead wait until the song finishes. Then interact with the radio once more, and you'll notice it begins to play a commentary from a baseball game. Upon hearing this audio, race back to the secret room and through the crawl space leading to the shuttered doorway. It will now be unlocked, but be quick as it will close again if you don't enter before the baseball game finishes. In this room we see an eerily familiar sight, a lost one banging their head against a refrigerator. You may remember this lost one as they also appeared as an easter egg in Bendy and the Ink Machine Chapter 4, found in a secret room while navigating the vent system. If we approach this lost one then they finally end their cycle of misery. Now also in this room is a table with a Bendy themed Dungeons and Dragons game. There are player cards, figurines, dice, and even a guide for how to play. Pulling the lever at the far side of a room leads back through the other sealed doorway and into the room where we first acquired our ability upgrade. The other secret found in this area of the studio pertains to a rather late game fetch quest. After entering the Gent Workshop factory in Chapter 4, we meet a rather imposing giant lost one known as Big Steve. 
This character is connected to an audio log for a beefy handyman who once worked at the studio by the name of Steve McGregor. Steve has been locked away inside the workshop and is hungry for his favourite meal, a still beating heart. If we retrieve this chilling cuisine for him, then the monstrous creature will give us access to a secret area of a factory, containing the final gent pipe upgrade. This upgrade allows us to stun the deadly keepers for a short duration, and so is definitely worth the trouble it takes to unlock. To get the heart for Big Steve, we must return to the Little Devil Lounge in Chapter 1 and then head over to the kitchen. With our flow ability, we are now able to teleport through the gap and into the kitchen, where the still beating heart can be found in this frying pan on the stove. Before leaving this area, head back out of the kitchen and down this hallway to unlock yet another secret room. This one containing a note from a mad chef named Buck, who tells the grisly tale of how he lured a worker from the animation department into his kitchen after hours, and then proceeded to kill him and use his meat in various dishes he served to the employees of the studio. After reading this unsettling murder note, we can now head back to the factory and give Steve his long-awaited meal. He sits in the corner and chows down, granting us access to a lever which when pulled opens this hidden room. The schematic for the final gent pipe upgrade is located within this safe and sound box. While exploring the city area with Bendy in Chapter 4, we can unlock a very creepy Luna-based easter egg, which pays homage to the classic Legends of Zelda game Majora's Mask and its terrifying looking moon. The moon looks pretty normal when we enter the city, but if we search around the environment, we can find 10 breakable pots. These pots also resemble the design found in the Legend of Zelda games too, though they are much smaller. I'm quickly showing on screen now the location of each of these pots around the environment, so follow this quick tutorial if you want to unlock the secret for yourself. After breaking the final pot, look to the sky and be ready for a scare, as the moon has grown enormous in size and looks angrily down on Audrey from above. Looking away from the moon causes it to return to its previous far off state, so be careful not to accidentally miss this blink and you'll miss it easter egg. One of the coolest sequences in Bendy and the Dark Revival is surely this lore-filled moment where the memory of Joey Drew whisks Audrey to the area of the studio where Henry first took his adventure in the original game. If we explore this area rather than simply sitting down in front of a projector, then we can find a few fun easter eggs. The first is found if we teleport up to this gap in the ceiling. Open the drawers of this desk and we find a secret audio log from none other than Wally Franks himself. At this point, I don't get what Joey's plan is for this company. The animation sure aren't being finished on time anymore, and I certainly don't see why we need this machine. It's noisy, it's messy, and who needs that much ink anyway? Also, get this. Joey had each one of us donate something from our workstation. We put them on these little pedestals in the break room. This was Wally's original audio log found in Chapter 1 of Bendy and the Ink Machine. After listening to Wally's audio log, drop down through this hole in the floorboards and Audrey comes across Henry's old desk. She then repeats roughly the same lines as Henry did when he visited this area in the previous game. Hey, here's an old desk. I bet someone wasted a lot of time in this chair. Finally, if we head over to the ink machine chamber and listen closely when standing beside its boarded up door, then we will hear the gentle beating of the ink demon's heart and a swell of inky voices. This is a throwback to when the demon emerged and tried to grab Henry during Chapter 1 of Bendy and the Ink Machine. The Cycle Breaker Room is almost like a treasure trove of fanservice throwbacks. It contains both characters and items from the story of a previous game, 
In this glass cabinet, we see the head of Norman Pock, the projectionist. If we hit the head, it springs to life with a screech. In this cell, we see Sammy Lawrence plucking away at his trusty banjo. While in this hidden room, we find a giant head that made up the Bertram Piedmont boss battle from Chapter 4 of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Upstairs, we find an empty cell belonging to Alice Angel, who appears later in the game. She has left a message behind though, allowing us to identify this room as hers. And finally, we have Henry himself in this cell, who can be seen drawing Bendy doodles in his notepad. Rather fittingly, as we know Henry was the true creator of the Dancing Demon. A neat easter egg to do with these rooms is that each cell number corresponds to the date of when the chapters of the first game released. Upstairs is a cabinet labelled Contraband, which includes Henry's axe, Sammy's record, and the seeing eye tool it used to track down secret messages around the studio. It's a nice throwback. Further into the game, when Audrey is asked to disarm herself before entering Wilson's retreat, the workbench where she places down her gent pipe also contains a few easter eggs the axe from the first game, and the Tommy gun from Chapter 3. In addition to these weapons, if we interact with a cabinet beneath the desk, we find a minigun is tucked away for safekeeping. One of the greatest secrets in Bendy and the Dark Revival is an unlockable rock concert performed by a band called the Ink Jets. To unlock this rocking secret, we must return to Alice Angel's tea party, and on the table you will find half a ticket stub for the show. The second half of this ticket is located deep within the Gent Workshop, on a cabinet in this top room floor here. After collecting both halves of a concert ticket, travel back to Artist Rest and get ready to rock out with the Ink Jets. Okay, yeah, and that totally makes sense. Now for a quick fire selection of smaller secrets and easter eggs. The first is this secret hidden in plain sight at the beginning of Audrey's adventure before even entering the Inky Realm. A cartoon sketch of a character known as Shipahoy Dudley. This is Wilson's own character design which he attempts to trap Audrey's soul inside at the end of Dark Revival. While we don't discover this character to be Wilson's until the end of the game, it can nonetheless be seen right at the beginning of Audrey's journey on this desk outside her office. Next up, we have a giant bird, which can be found by jumping from the platform of Subway 77 and then taking a left down the abandoned track. We reach a cell where a giant ink crow is pecking away at a message from Joey Drew, which reads, just a pencil and a dream. Another highly creepy secret found on Platform 77 is this ghost train, which passes by if we enter the station at exactly 4.14am. This ghost train is referenced in a note found on the platform bench, and the number 414 is a date synonymous with the Bendy fanbase, so beware of Platform 77 if playing in the early hours of the morning. The next mini secret is very simple to unlock, though many, myself included, missed it the first time round, as it comes at the cost of being rather cruel to the adorable cartoon version of Bendy. Strike this baby Bendy's head to see it spin like a top. While in the city with Bendy, you will notice that before entering the hotel, he wanders over to this locked door and points at it. 
If we knock on the door again and again, eventually a voice can be heard. This voice appears to belong to a disgruntled movie critic, fed up of the Bendy movies playing at the local cinema. Remember Carly, the ghostly fourth member of the Butcher Gang? If we open her box, then for the remainder of the game at random intervals, Carly will appear out of thin air to loudly jump scare the player and, if we are not quick enough, deal out some damage in the process. However, if we do not open Carly's box, then she never escapes, and the entire game can be experienced without ever encountering her ghoulish presence. So by opening the box, we in fact release a terrible curse upon Audrey and the studio. The final of the smaller secrets is a loving nod to another popular indie horror game franchise. During the riddle puzzle, we are required to line up a series of animal heads in the correct order. The correct order being a rabbit, a bear, a bird, and a fox. Feel familiar? Well, these are the animal characters who made up the original animatronic lineup in Five Nights at Freddy's. Not only that, this is the order they appeared on while on stage, with Foxy the Fox off to the right in Pirate's Cove. Throughout Audrey's journey, she comes across various memories from her past as a child growing up under the care of her creator and father, Joey Drew. These memories seem to be from Joey himself and bring Audrey back nostalgic feelings from the past, a past she chose to forget. Here are the locations and descriptions for each of the 10 memories unlockable during the game. Memory 1 is tied to a baseball which can be found in plain sight just after entering the studio. A baseball signed by the legendary Bud Lewis. This would make an exciting gift for any young baseball fan. Memory 2 is a paper plane found in the secret room near the Heavenly Toys Workshop, where we first retrieved Sean Flynn's hidden robot. A paper airplane skillfully crafted to carry far on soft wind. This creative toy was cheap to make, but rich in memories. Memory 3 is a rubber duck found inside the locker at the end of chapter 1 while navigating the hallways as the ink demon speaks to Audrey. A rubber duck, still dusted with the decay of old soap. Many happy washings were companioned by this yellow friend. Memory 4 is this tin of engine oil dumped inside a bin on the balcony within the artist rest area. A tin of engine oil, usually stored near the garage. Many road trips and Sunday drives benefited from this. Memory 5 is an alarm clock which can be located within the secret middle floor inside the elevator shaft after our battle with a King Widow boss. An alarm clock to count the precious hours of each day. There's not much time, so every second together is special. Memory 6 is a box of crayons which is well hidden and very missable. It is found during the Joey Drew flashback in Chapter 4, seated in a box within these rafters which Audrey must use her flow ability to reach. A box of crayons to encourage a small mind to grow. Arrays of colours can spark a world all of your own. Memory 7 is this fashionable hat, which is sat inside a locker in the downtown subway station. A man's fashionable hat, perfect for a summer stroll in the park. It still smells of cotton candy and playful afternoons. Memory 8 is a carton of milk which can be collected to the left of this room just before entering the pit and triggering the final cutscene of Chapter 4. A carton of milk for growing up strong and healthy. Add some chocolate for a snack enjoyed by both young and old. Memory 9 is a cracked mug which can be accessed by completing an in-game side quest. Betty will ask Audrey to collect her up some groceries from the nearby farmer's market downtown, so simply backtrack to the market using the train and interact with a box labelled Live Contents. I don't think we want to know what could be inside. Then return to Betty and deliver this mystery meat and in return she will tell us a secret item is floating in the inky fountain nearby. Head over to the fountain and collect up the cracked mug which has the following description. A cracked mug lovingly repurposed into a plaything. It may be sad, but it still has life in it yet. The tenth and last memory is this hot dog, which can be found inside a locker within Wilson's lab. A delicious hot dog, plain with mustard. The perfect quick meal for a lazy Sunday.
I don't usually indulge in hacks for games, but I was compelled to on this occasion after learning of a few choice secrets included specifically by the developers for the hacking community. You'll remember that in Bendy and the Ink Machine, those who hacked into out of bounds areas of the game world were greeted by a creepy Bendy cutout holding a sign which read, Wondering is a terrible sin. In Dark Revival, the team at Joey Drew Studios took this concept one step further by creating a 3D model of the insane looking dancing demon. He can be found by hacking into unreachable areas of the map. There are also a collection of towers which can be found way out of bounds and bring back a few familiar faces, such as Boris the Wolf and this resting lost one. So Boris did get to make a comeback in some form after all. These monuments contain a series of numbers and the letter L. Each number corresponds to its letter of the alphabet, and so, when translated, these towers give us the message, hello, greeting any would-be hacker who may stumble across them. You may have noticed while travelling around the inky depths of Joey Drew Studios a series of books written by Joey himself titled The Illusion of Living. These books do not highlight like typical collectibles, but they can be picked up nonetheless. There are 24 in total and some are very well hidden. In the interest of time, I'm not going to show every book location in this video, but on screen now is a list detailing the location of each. So feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot at this time if you'd like to track down and find them for yourselves. They are after all tied to an achievement, one called the Insane Reader. But why does this achievement have such a name? Well, after collecting up the 24th book, which is found just before the point of no return in this locker outside of Wilson's laboratory, rather than heading into the lab, instead turn around and head back up the stairway and up toward his retreat. You'll soon come across this chair which can be sat upon. If you've collected all 24 books successfully, then a secret ending will play out. This is the insanity ending and sees Audrey locked in a padded room in a straitjacket. We can control her as she flips around on the floor while the credits roll. This isn't intended to be a canon ending, but rather a fun easter egg for those who took the time to seek out the writings of Joey Drew. The very last secret is another hidden ending and this one can be unlocked right at the beginning of the game, providing you have the patience that is. After the opening cinematic, simply leave Audrey sat at her desk for around 20 minutes. Doing so triggers the following ending. Well, the coffee's good and all, but this works. Gotta get done. Focus, Audrey. Focus. As Audrey never got up that fateful stormy night, then she never ran into Wilson and therefore never became involved in his sinister plans. Instead, life simply goes on as before and Audrey continues her life as normal. And with that, we come to the end of this look at the secrets and easter eggs found within the story of Bendy and the Dark Revival. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. If you did then remember to leave a like, comment down below and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.